Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Thank you, Jesus. In Isaiah 46, verses 8. Bible speaks of things that show you man, show you to be man. The Bible says there are things that show you to be mature. That you might not transgress. Now the Bible says that if I build the very things I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. But he says in Isaiah 46, remember you can show yourselves man. In other words, show yourselves mature. Don't don't be babes. Show yourselves man. That you will not transgress, that you will not break the very things you build. You should not destroy the very things that you build. Or oh, that you do not build the very thing you destroy. That somehow you don't walk off the course that you were set. That you don't change the direction of that God has set you on and set the man. Praise God. The next verse says that remember the former things of old. For he says, I am God. And there is none else. Again he repeats, I am God. And he says that there is man. Next first says, I declare the end from the beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done. He says, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my things. Calling the ravenous birds from the east and the land that executed my counsel from a far off. And yeah, I have spoken it, I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I shall also, I will also do it. The Bible says it's the God who knows the end. Declare the things of the end from the beginning and from the ancient times. And he says, My counsel will stand. There is nothing he has spoken that shall not stand. He is God. He is God. Be men. Grow up mature and understand that he is God. You have to grow up to understand that he is God. And everything he has declared, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. He says he's the God who even calls the ravenous bad. And the Bible says the man that executed his counsel from a far country, he's that God that calls you to execute his counsel. And he says my counsel shall stay. It shall be established. In other words, what he has spoken upon your life, it shall come 
to pass. So you ask yourself the question, why is it that Christians live a substandard life? They live a mediocre life. They live a life of failure. They live a life of struggle. They live a life of strife. They live a life of unfulfillment. The reality is that there are many people who leave the face of this earth and die without having lived the fulfillment of the counsel of God upon their life. And yet he has called the things of the end from the beginning. He has declared the things of the end from the beginning. And some people, because they don't live a full life or fulfilled life, they think, uh, maybe for me God did not design me to live a certain way. Maybe for me it was ordained that I should live a mediocre life. Maybe for me it was ordained that I should live an unfulfilled life. There are many people who walk this life without knowing the vision of their life. They don't know the vision of their life. You see, the Bible says that without vision, the people cast off restraint. You understand? Without vision, the people cast off restraint. The people are destroyed. If you don't have a vision for your life, there are many things that that will hit you. Praise God. He says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. The people cast off restraint. He says, but blessed is he that keepeth the law. You see, if you are not walking, or if you don't walk according to the vision of your life, you cast off restraint. In other words, you live a life of limitation. You live a life of limitation. You live a life of disappointment. You live a life of... Because you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't have a vision for your life. This physical world is very wicked. This physical world is very cruel. The world you see, it's very, very evil. Because of the corruption that it carries within. You understand what I'm saying? A man cannot be a lover of God and a lover of the world. You can't. Satan is the God of this age. The systems of this world are so... Can I use the word coagulated? They have left the shape of their true test. And many of us, even what we call answered prayer, it's of the fallen nature. What we call answered prayer, it is, it is the mind of the fallen nature. Because the fallen nature has vision too. It has revelation. He says that the people without vision cast off restraint. They perish. The Amplified says, if you don't have the revelation of God's redemptive power, the, the redemptive revelation of God, you perish. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says, but he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, enviable, he is. Some people don't understand the redemptive revelation of God. 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 The revelation of God that is redemptive. When you get the vision of your life, everything changes. But you cannot get that vision without understanding God. The one who designed the eons and the cosmos, the one who drew the end from the beginning, 
the reality is that there is a report of you from beginning to the end according to the mind of God and his counsel huh? that was designed for you the Bible is simply a mirror that story you get it it's simply a mirror he says and as we behold like in a mirror the glory of God he says a man that readeth the word and doeth it not is like he that looketh in the mirror and forgetteth who really he is. The Bible, some of you are trying to interpret the Bible. Yet the Bible is trying to interpret you. Mirrors interpret the objects before them. The objects before them don't interpret mirrors. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible is supposed to explain you. It's supposed to interpret you. You are the mystery. You are the story. You are the entity in which Christ has chosen to live with. Christ does not live in the Bible. No. It's just words. There's a man with a Bible right now under his bed and it's, he's going to die. And it's not going to help him. There's a man with scriptures in his head and those scriptures are not going to help him. There's a man with scriptures on his phone or tablet and it's not going to help him either. Because it's not what you have in that book. It's the engrafted word of God which is able to save your souls. And he tells us to receive that with meekness. You understand? Some people don't take the word of God like, like it's life. Some people take it like it's the other option. Some people, the way they live their life, it's evident they don't have a vision for their life. They don't seek God like they have a vision for their life. They don't relate with the word of God like they have a vision for their life. And he tells you twice, I am God. Don't deal with me like you're dealing with a normal human being. Don't pray like you're praying to a normal human being. Don't come in my presence like you're going to attend a normal human being's presence. I am God. He rebuked the children of Israel and tell them, hey, don't overstep your place of worship from the Holy One amidst you. You get it? There's a vision of God that is supposed to be set before you always because without that vision you will never have a vision for your life. There are things that look so hard and there are things that look merely are nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. You understand what I'm saying? God is real. I'm in the vision of my life. I know where I'm going. I know my future. I am persuaded of where I'm going. I am on that course. And when you're called according to that purpose, all things work together for good. Because you love the Lord and you're called according to his purpose. The life of salvation will have trials, but the servant of God must not strive must not strive. It doesn't mean that things won't come. They will come with all manner and nature. Waiting on the Lord can only make sense when you have a vision of your life. Otherwise, some people wait in vain and only realize they wasted time. And some, because of the delay that comes with that, many decisions are made in the flesh. It's the thing that was disturbing Abraham. I usually tell people that there are visitations and there are encounters. You understand? When Jesus walked in a village, he visited men. It does not mean that every man who was in that village visited had an encounter with him. You remember the time when the woman with a bleeding issue presses through to touch him? I can say all the people around the Christ had a visitation. But one woman encountered 
the saving power of God. She encountered the saving power of God. The encounters that can never leave your life the same again. Even if you try and say, let me try, they will never leave you the same again. Some of you, I sometimes try to express certain things and they are not understood. And I know one day some of you it will sink. There are things that are disturbing you because you have not encountered God a certain way. There is an encounter that can come upon your life. And the rest of your life changes. For me it was one. There were many, but there was this one. That day I knew that the vision of my life was clear. It was clear. Yes, certain things delayed, but I knew as one waiting upon the Lord, knowing exactly the timing of the Spirit. That at a particular point, certain things were to happen. Those I call always the milestones of your destiny. That you might not know the full picture, but you will know when certain moments come. You will know your seasons. Your days will be numbered. You, the events of the Spirit will not bypass you for purpose when God intends to move in that given time you will be relevant because you'll have a pattern lot you will not one who sails through without a path your path will be clear it will be defined by jehovah god you must have a vision for your life and he's telling you i am god my counsel shall stand i have declared it and it shall come to pass. If you did not have clarity of the vision of your life tonight, it will be clear. It will be clear. It will be clear. Smith Wiggles was loved God. He believed God. He was a man who loved God. But he took so long to know the vision of his time. And some people say, oh no, it was the appointed time of God. You see, it can only be the appointed time of God when you have the vision of your life. <laughs> to know when the appointment comes. You understand? The people who don't even know that appointment when it comes. You remember the man at the well? Every time he wants to get in, somebody gets in before him. Because he did not have a vision of his life. Even when the Christ is before him to heal him, he does not know that his salvation is nearer than he ever believed. And some change course. If Jonah had a vision of his life, he would not have taken the sheep the opposite direction from, God, from where God had sent him. He needed a fish to swallow him. Eh? And then take him to the deep. For him to seek God for three days to align him back to the vision of his life as a prophet. He needed that. But he was a prophet. He was a prophet. He was a prophet. The sons of the prophets that lived in the time of Elijah, they did not know that the man that was going to be taken away was the chariot and the horseman of Israel. They did not know. Their level of prophecy was, Elisha, the Lord is taking your master, your master. Do you understand? He's taking your master, your master. But when the anointing fell on Elisha, the Bible says they bowed down to him. They could not worship the God of Elijah, but they responded. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't understand that this was the chariot and horseman of Israel. They did not know that the anointing for the extension of posterity and the writing of the history in that time was upon Elijah.
it wasn't on any man. It was on Elijah. And all they could see, oh, Elisha, no snot. I think they, they even were, were celebrating it at that point of, you know, we can see in the spirit. And Elisha is telling them, you're telling me things which are knowledge. They're not just insight in divine purpose. They are knowledge. I know that already. Praise God. When the man is lifted, they said, surely the spirit of Elijah rests upon him. Praise God. That's when they honored the anointing. I don't even think that many of them from that day on understood what had happened. I don't think that, that they understood what happened. He says, And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. What was the revelation on those prophets that day? It finally, when the spirit of Elijah settled on Elisha, they realized that they had lost a special timing in the spirit. Because that was the day they realized that Elisha was not their peer and Elijah was not just a prophet. The scales fell off their eyes. And then they get the full vision of who Elijah was. The man is taken up and they realize, no, this was not in our own class. But during that time, they assumed that Elijah was in their class. They assumed he was their level. So, when Elijah was walking the surface of that earth that day, I don't think that those guys thought that the highest level then in their realm of the prophetic was was to discern what was coming on the earth that day. No, I think for them their highest level was to see what was going to happen to the master of Elisha. When you don't have the vision of your life, you don't even know who to submit to. You cannot know your true submission. You just jump. You're here tomorrow, you're there, tomorrow, you're there, the other day, you're there, because you don't have a vision for your life. How can you know? Some people never ask themselves, what happened to those boys after they bowed down to Elisha? Was history kind enough even to keep their names for us? No. They're ever going to stay sons of the prophet. God, listen, God does not reveal the mystical revelation of the generational purpose to children. That covenant is with fathers. See, when he says that I'm the Lord who gives you power to make wealth, that I might establish the covenant that I made with your fathers, you better know the things God can make with you and the covenant he can make with your father. Those are different things. Paul says, I understood this gospel according to our forefathers. You see, like I said, there are things that God cannot bequeath sons. They are only in the responsibility of fathers to pass on. The sons of the prophets didn't know that they owed sonship to Elijah. They did not know that. If they did, there are people I see struggling and all they need is to go and sit under a certain anointing and their lives will change. But they can't because they are too proud and pompous. Fathering is a spirit. It's not an age. It's not a nature. It's not just something that some people deal with. Because today many people are looking like, they appear like, they sound like, but they don't get it. They, they are not it. They are not it. How do I know? I know. I know. I know. There are people you meet in this world and your life will never be the same again. 
but is the eye of your vision open? You understand? Because like I said, the sons of the prophet, their eyes were not open to know who Elijah was. And guess what? They missed out. And God had owned them. He said, I have with me 7,000 that have not bowed their, bow their heads to bow. To bow. Those boys are among them. That day, I don't know how many were there, but those boys were among the 7,000 that had not bowed their heads to bow. But of the 7,000 that had not bowed their heads to bow, only one man got it, Elisha. The rest sell this life as prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists, businesswomen, engineers, doctors, and all these kinds of things. And you know what? In that whole generation, God picked Elijah and Elisha and went into the next and they seemed like they never muttered yet the counsel of God was clear he had them consecrated for his name he didn't just have 7,000 men for them to simply die no more men no but there was a reason why the moment God gives Elijah the vision of 7,000 men the first person he tells is go look for Elisha and to show you his position, to get to him, you need to get through Jehu. You need to get through Hazael, right? And he that escapes the sword of, shall not escape the sword of. He's trying to show you that, no, this boy was above kings. He was above priests. And he says, and him that escapeth the sword of Hazael, him Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. That means above Elisha there was nobody. Elisha was the revelation of God's highest level of power. If it fails Hazael, Jehu will kill it. If Jehu fails, Elisha will definitely kill it. There was no provision of if it fails Elisha. Because to get to Elisha, it was as though you had gotten to God himself. <laughs> I mean, there are men who touched a certain realm with God. In the Bible, there is a man called Ahithophel. The Bible says that he, he was the oracle of God himself. Literally, when Ahithophel began speaking, Men did hear Hithophel speaking. They were sure God was speaking. He earned that right in the spirit. He says, and the counsel of Hithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. At the oracle of God. As in when Hithophel tells you do this, God has spoken. It's not, and you know, history records it that way. Up to today. We respect that level of grace on that man that when he spoke, God had spoken. You can never add on it. You can never subtract it. You understand? It was there. You, you can't add on it. You can't take from it. You can't, you can't frustrate it. You can't. And God can put a distinction upon your life. Eh? God can put a very special distinction upon your life that whoever sees it can say, no, what is upon this person is this. Small talk can take it away. Cheap words can take it away. Small little things that you will go through, they will come and they will go. And the counsel of God will stay because it's the same God that calls the man that carries, executes his counsel from afar. So we were ordained to execute the counsel of God. Everyone has a part in this. It depends on the revelation of the vision of God and the vision of your life because you can only find the vision of your life when God is fully revealed. But you must know your life. That's why you look in the Old Testament, the men who walked with God. Look at Stephen, Stephanus. The Bible says he gave up his ghost. Stephen did not die because of the stoning. Stephen died because he gave up his ghost. In your hands I commit my spirit. 
Jesus was not killed. Jesus gave his life. Jesus gave his life. Jesus gave his life. You understand what I'm saying? He gave his life. Look at Joseph, how he died. Look at David, how he died. Look at Abraham, how he died. They gave up their spirits. They knew it was time. The vision of their life was clear. They knew the time matrix. They knew the place beyond which the Lord had ordained for them. And they knew they were done. They went to heaven in glory. They did not kick or regret leaving. There are men you don't... There are people you don't even go, now let's go and raise Abraham. No, 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 he's done. Will you raise him? Get up in Jesus' name. Sorry, his body. He could not. The Son of God knew when he would lay down his life. And he knew the time the Lord would raise him from glory. You understand what I'm saying? There's a certain, there's a certain understanding you must have about your life. You cannot walk anymore guessing where to go, guessing, where to do business, guessing, where to do ministry, guessing, where to go to church, guessing, how to pray, guessing, what to do, guessing your job, guessing your marriage, guessing, 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 you understand? Some people marry the wrong people. And the course of their life is changed. And they will never know what they could have been in God. They will never know what they could have been in God. You have to get to a point where your spirit is so surrendered to the will of God that it doesn't matter how painful it is. If it's God, it's all right. I mean, if it's not God, it doesn't matter how expensive you let it go. Because he's that expensive. He's precious. He's, he's incomparable. You understand? Abraham would not have gotten a sword and put it in the face of his child. This man had believed God for a child all the days of his life. If he lived in our time, they would think this was Satan. You mean you've gotten this far and given me a child at a hundred years old and I should starve them. But the Bible says, but Abraham <laughs> believed God. You understand? Eh? What people don't know is but if you read scripture, you realize Abraham did not try to kill that boy. He killed him. He killed him. How do I know? Because the intention was fulfilled. It was only held through by God telling him, Stop. He literally had to call him out, the angel, right? Tell him don't. Otherwise... The intention, you understand? For example, if you look at a woman lustfully, haven't you committed adultery? Because yeah. intent, just, just intent, Abraham killed that boy. Isaac left that altar a living sacrifice. He said in Isaac, shall thy seed be called? And Luke 8, 11 says the parable is that the seed is the word of God. <laughs> I wish they understand where I'm going. So in Isaac, the living sacrifice, which loves. Huh? He was called Isaac because he loves. He says, in Isaac shall thine seed be called. The calling of the Christian faith is likened to the experience. So when Paul speaks of the living sacrifice, you understand, the living sacrifice. Those are the sacrifices that have been killed on the altar. Some of you never died on the altar. <laughs> and you call yourselves living sacrifices. You, 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 you have to die on the altar to live. You understand what I'm saying? The sword does not cut you a certain way. Oh, you don't understand that the sword is a word? Double-edged? You've not been cut asunder. 
The word is supposed to kill you in order to live. Some of you it encourages you, it excites you, it, re, it, it rebukes you, it corrects you. It, that's all it does. It doesn't kill you. Many of you are too alive to see. Many, many of you are too alive to see. You're too alive to see. Let me tell you, this world, this physical eye is too limited. What you don't see with your physical eye is way much than what you see with this physical eye. You know, I have realized that the day, the day my eyes were open, I died to many things, many, 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 many things. There are things that people think will excite me, but they don't anymore. Because, and I'm not trying to stay under, I don't try to keep my flesh under the excitement. It's not there. If you look for it, it's not there. Because I know the thing that truly satisfies now, I have drunk from that cup, I know. You understand? I know. I know. I understand. I, I know. When Paul says that I'm run my race, I've finished my course, he says I'm now being poured out, right? Like an offering. He's trying to define a certain cup, huh? The same cup in Gethsemane where he says, if it be possible, take this cup off me. But if it be thy will, God... Let me fulfill it. You understand? So I tell people that many know the blood at Calvary, the, sh the wounding for our transgressions, the bruise of our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace, you know, the brow, the sweat of the brow, but they do not know the bleeding in Gethsemane. They don't understand what it means to bleed because of the cup. They don't know what it's like to bleed because of the cup. You understand? It had to take the grace of God for Jesus to say, but if it be thy will, do what thou wilt. You understand? And from then on, events started unfolding and quickening for the crucifixion of the Son of God. And the Bible says he learned obedience through the things he suffered. And because of that, the Bible says he came, became the captain of our salvation through suffering. He was set and given a name above every name that at the sound of that name every knee bows and every tongue confesses of the things in the earth and of the things under earth and of the things in heaven. Every tongue confesses that day that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He, he takes preeminence. He becomes the firstborn of them which are begotten of God. But you see, many people don't understand the death with which he died. You get it? He, he was representing a certain cup, a certain mandate, a certain responsibility. God can fully work only in men which are dead. You understand? We're not yielded sacrifices only for the altar convinced that we were ready we were yielded sacrifices only for the altar to die there because he that keepeth his life shall lose it and he that loses his life he shall find it that's the paradox of this mystery and we found it because we lost it and they have kept it but they will lose it eventually they'll cast restraint they'll cast off restraint some things in the latter days of their lives, they don't need to be poor or... Because some people think the end of it is money. <laughs> wow. You know, one time Jesus asked me, I had everything. Why did I not muse myself in the luxuries of, of the things that I had access to? You understand? I mean, you, do you think Jesus was broke? Huh? He wasn't broken. But why didn't he have the most expensive horse? 
You understand? Couldn't he buy a legion of army? A battalion of men? He would have. He would cause angels to do anything that he wanted. But the Son of God was dead to those things. Yet when he sent out the disciples, they never lacked any good thing. He said, when I sent you with, you know, Sutherland, Sunderland, he asked them, did you lack? They said, no, we never lacked. No, the kingdom is fully funded. What am I trying to tell you? When riches increase, in that Psalms 32, do not set your heart on them. You understand? When glory, when pomp increases, don't set your heart on it. These riches could be money, but they could be anything else. They could be a promotion. It could be a small thing, like you... The riches of his glory, you know, gave you many things. It doesn't necessarily need to be money, but it can be anything. And that thing sort of makes you lose your heart and set your heart elsewhere. You understand? If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. In other words, here riches it means if anything adds on you that qualifies you by the worldly standard, don't set your heart on it. It could be leadership, it could be a position, it could be a promotion, it could be you know, status, you are this and now you're that, you are single, now you're married. It's, it's, it's riches. Don't set, you know, let it not be the thing that defines you. God is trying to tell you there is a place that always you have to set your heart upon. Have the vision of your life. I have seen people, I wish I could tell that the reason why you're struggling, sir, is you don't have a clue about your life. You don't have a clue. I've met couples who say, God has told us to marry, and I'm sure he hasn't. Because they don't have a vision of their life. They don't even know who to marry. I've seen people crying for people they didn't marry. Yet they were not supposed to marry them. But they are crying. Yet God helped them. He helped them. I've seen people weeping, fired on jobs because they delayed to leave according to the will of God, and they left in tears. You understand? See, because cause they don't have the vision of their life. I've seen people leave early. I've seen people leave early. And I know, no, this one does not have the vision of their life. One time a girl left the ministry, and a couple of, one, two years later, everything went so wrong. It hit her so bad, she went back into religion. And somebody told me a whole story of this girl. I went home and I wept. I said, God, I wish she knew. I wish she knew. She followed a young man. Uh, the Lord had spoken to her that is the husband and she has to submit to the husband. Uh, it didn't even work. The relationship failed horribly. And I think, I don't even think her eyes can see. And I warned her. I told her, no, that's the wrong course. But some people don't understand it. You see, there are things in your life that should not happen. Because they're not supposed to be in the story God has laid upon you. It's, they're not supposed... He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. It's not too late to change. You can pick it tonight and just run with it. But let this night be worth it. Let it be worth it. Let, let it be worth it. Let, let it be worth it. Let God give you a glimpse of the future. Let him help you understand let him help you go beyond simply knowing that Elijah is going. Eh? Simply knowing, oh, some of you even see things in other people's lives. Oh, 
I said, I dreamt this and it comes to pass. And you think that because you dreamt it and it came to pass, therefore you have the vision of your life. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Some of you may be because you serve and, you know, you teach, you preach, you think you have the vision of your life. No, no, no. There are many people who teach through their life and die ministering, but they are, they don't even have a clue about the vision of their life. Not all people who have studied in the gospel. You see, you remember in Ecclesiastes 6 where he speaks of the man whom God gives power, wisdom, glory, and he has not the strength to eat thereof, and the stranger comes, eats. Eh? Yeah? There's a very remarkable word there, if you continue in that same scripture. It's down here. So yet God giveth him not the power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. And this is vanity and it's an evil disease. Next verse says, if a man beget a hundred children, listen, and have many years, listen, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. Some of you should get that. So deep. He says, you see, if you don't live the vision of your life, even if you live for a hundred years and have a hundred children, you are still worse than an untimely birth. Than a still birth. You were better off have been not born. He's trying to tell you this is the part where even your children that you have had in your own loins don't matter and these things. Otherwise, Abraham would not have killed Isaac. He loved his boy. How do I know? If he was not even willing to let go of Ishmael, who was not of the promise. He was a man who loved his children. Do you understand? But do you know a child can make you leave the course of God? A child. Your child, your baby, your son, your daughter, who you love so much. They can short circuit you. A true man of God cannot worry about their children if they are a true man of God. Because you have them in the way. They should go. You understand? You've spoken enough and done enough in their lives. In fact, I worry more about people outside than my child. Because my child is under my covering. Our children can't fail. It's not possible. It's not possible. You understand? If they do, then you messed up somewhere in the way they should go. Fix it. You understand what I'm saying? But he's telling this man that even if he lived a hundred years, oh, if somebody lived a hundred years, oh my goodness, that's, that's, that's a blessing. You mean this guy lived a hundred? Wow. As in, that's the mystery of divine health. And, and God is telling you, uh-uh. If this guy did not live the fulfillment of his life, even if he lived a hundred years and had a hundred children, his life was still like an untimely birth. That is why when Jesus did three years and he died at 33, there was no lament in the Son of God. He could have come earlier simply to live longer. But there was nothing for him to live for. Nothing. You see, many people, they're even afraid to die because they don't have a vision of their life. So they don't know if I die now, what have I done according to this calendar. You understand? But then you find a man who is in the late years, is in the overflow of the spirit. He's, he's, he says, I'm like an offering, ready to be poured out. Up to today, Paul is poured out. And we still preach him. He's poured out. And we still preach him. 
is poured out. And we're still preaching. And you see the time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand. I will soon go. He knows. He knows. Death didn't catch him by accident. He knows. Such men you don't weep. No, they finished. Some of you, you just want to live up to a hundred. That's why you eat healthy. Not to serve God. Not for the glory of God. No, you eat healthy just to. But you see, you can't find this thing and you just die. You just, they said, no, something just killed him or her. No. Because it can't kill a man who is on a mission. It can't. It can't. Nothing can stop that kind of man. Because that man has a calendar. He has a letter. He has a story. God has ordained it. He knows he's going in and going out. He knows his end from the beginning. He knows how it will end. He just doesn't. You understand? He knows. You ought to know the story of your life. You might not know in 26 minutes. No. But every time you're drawn to that moment, you should know. You know why many purposes are frustrated? It's because many have a false season and timing of the spirit. So every time they have a season and timing of the spirit and hope is deferred, what happens? The heart is made sick. And when a, when a spirit of a man is, is bruised, when it is wounded, the Bible says nobody can help him. A wounded spirit cannot be helped. You understand? Everything is frustrated. Everything is frustrated. Everything is frustrated. Before you were born, God defined your end. And that story exists. And he asks you, whose report will you believe? But how can you believe when you have not had the revelation of what to believe? How can you believe a report you have not read? Some people are simply believing in the simplest assumptions of the things they see falling out as they are shared in scripture. And they say, I, I think, I, I believe, and then they quote these things. But they don't have the full story. God wants to give you the full story. He just wants to give you the full story. The full story. Not half, not quarter, but the full story. The full story. Speak to God. You, you must see something tonight. You must see something tonight. You must see something tonight. Tell God I don't walk out of this place without seeing something. Come on, pray. The vision of your life. You must see it. You must see it. Without vision, you're destroyed. You're destroyed. Jesus 
Sira ba 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 kusa ro ro bo 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 bo. Sira ba 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 kusi kete re 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 ba. Sira ba 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 kusa ra ba 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 ba. Sira re 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 ba 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 ba. Sipro ko ra ba 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 ba. Zire re 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 ba 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 ba. Zira ra ba 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 kusa ra ba ba. Zira ba 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 kusa ta 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 ra ba ba. Zire re 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 ba 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 kusa re re ba. Ba sa ba ta la ba ba kusa ra ba ba ba. Sare be 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 se ke te 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 re be. Sira bo 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 sa ta 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 ra ba. Sira re 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 ba 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 ko te 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 ma do ro ro. Si po to to bo ro bo 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 sa ra ba ba ba. Sa ba to re ma ma do ro bo 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 se ba ta la ba. Si te ma ma do ro bo se ba 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 ba. Sara re 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 ba ba. Se re 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 ba ba ba. Se re 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 ba ba ba. Se re 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 ba 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 ba. Sara ba 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 ba. Se re 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 re
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for everything you've done to us and for us tonight. Indeed, our lives cannot be the same again. Karamandusa. Somebody put up your hands in the air. Father, we thank you that tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, our prayer has been heard. And that nobody walks back the same way they came. It's not possible. Something has shifted. Something has taken place. There's an encounter tonight. And our lives cannot remain the same again. Heaven records this death in history of human time. As it was recorded in the history of eternal time. And indeed like God has said it shall be. His counsel shall be upon your life. Things become clearer from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Things fall for you in pleasant places. Things are working for your good. The milestones become clearer tonight. Your heart will beat timely with heavenly encounters. And visitations will come with encounters always. In Jesus' name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.